Hello, how you doing? Big Yumbo here. I'm just going to do a little thrift haul for you. Went to four thrift stores today. Actually calculated when I was in one of them that I look at over 4,000 items per thrift store. And that would be over 16,000 items I looked at today and I found 32. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh, you find the best stuff in your area. It's because I looked at 16,000 items. Um, anyways... So I'm a little tired, but this first thrift store was very good. I found a vintage Woolrich made in USA wool vest. It's got the wool exterior and then like a nice fleece liner. Only five bucks. Vintage wool, wool rich stuff that is wool um, typically does pretty darn good for me. Um, I don't really pick up their like button up shirts or anything like that. But the wool stuff does pretty well. This company is called Pizza Slime. It's only about a 50% sell through rate. Um, but I just kind of wanted to grab it because I heard Thrift Alive talk about it before. I think it was actually in a video where he said what is like crappy items that didn't sell. But I still wanted to get it anyways. Um, it's like a $20 item. Just like all the YouTubers that I do watch whenever they find a brand. I like have to buy that brand. At least once. Um, but yeah, it's like a $20 item. I think he prices like super high though, which is why I didn't sell. Because it's like a 50% sell through rate, which is like not that bad. Um, for $7, we found a vintage LL Bean made in USA, Freeport, Maine. See that goose down puffer vest. And it's in really good condition for like how old it is. It's got these cool little buttons there. I almost want to keep it. Men's large. Good find. I think last winter I was selling those for like $45. So I don't know. I haven't looked up the comps on it. But that was for non-vintage ones. So hopefully it's still around there. Catton is a really good brand. It's kind of a surf-oriented company. Um, their basic button-ups sell fine. Their Henley shirts sell immediately. Over the summer, their shorts sell really really well for like over 30 bucks this is like a 20 dollar item and i paid six dollars for it i'll pick up Catton. anything it's it's a super solid brand this is a tap out shirt with a mexican themed color scheme it was five dollars it has over 100 percent sell through rate i looked up tap out it's also made in usa so it's like vintage um i looked up tap out mexico shirt over 100% sell through rate. A very similar shirt has a $39 sold comp. This company is called Scully. They make Western, Southwestern, uh, what do you call it? Frontier wear is what you'd call this. It's kind of old timey clothing, like people that like to dress up like, I don't know, Civil War reenactors or something. Only five bucks. Should get about $35 for this. And it's over 100% sell through rate for Scully bib shirts. This is called a bib shirt when it has this bib on it. And it has these nice little details. This denim one should go for more like 50 though. You gotta look up the comps on Scully stuff. Don't pay too much up too much for it. It's um it's very similar to Wahmaker, W-A-H-M-A-K-E-R. But Wahmaker is way better. But both pretty solid brands. Anytime you find stuff from a similar brand or similar looking thing, like I think H Bar C might make some stuff like that as well. This is Rising International. This is what I would call a hippie hoodie. It's got like cool, weird patchwork stuff on it. I stopped picking these up for a while. And then I just started again because the sell through rate uh, went up a little on them. Not quite 100%. Um, for women's large rising international hoodie, but the prices were really good. I find a lot of these anchor blue baggy jeans. These ones are uh, the beyond baggy. But yeah, I price them anywhere between thirty and fifty dollars right now. These were seven. Um, over the summer, they sell a little worse, and the anchor blue baggy jean shorts sell a little better, but. 
This is a super good find because I found like three pairs of them. These ones are called the Big Baggy. Also seven bucks. All in pretty good condition. And you can get away with condition issues on these. Because um, it's like little skateboard teenagers are going to buy them. Also good sizes too. Small waist, long inseam. Which is like my favorite type of size to find. A lot of people who sell like Squishmallows and Barbie dolls. We'll try to tell you that big waist, like size 42 jeans are the best. They're not. They're like the worst to sell. Um, if you find a pair of double front Carhartts that are like 32, 30, they'll sell instantly. If you find a pair of double knee uh, Carhartts that are size 42, 30, you're waiting like a month. Uh, that is Woolrich. Sorry, I'm looking at the reflection in the camera to see what it is. It's a vintage Woolrich vest actually made out of wool which is cool and it's kind of that same frontier wear style where it has the little um some damage on there should be fine though whatever this is called like a cowboy would wear it and that's a pretty cool tag there actually i never seen that one and then i found these vintage levi's i love selling vintage levi's i find them every single day but i don't pick all of them up because not all of them are that great uh, these ones, I believe, are 70s or 80s, though. I only know how to read the 90s tag, unfortunately. I don't know how to read this tag. So what I'll do is post a picture of that in the Levi's Denim Research Group on Facebook. And those people are, like, obsessed with Levi's, and they will know. These ones are the 517, 2017, and a size 3830. So not a great size, but... And they also have like a gold tab here. Um, yeah. Definitely older, definitely before the 90s. I'm pretty sure that tag is at least 80s, but I don't know about 70s. Um, Levi's are just, I'm crushing it with Levi's right now. Even a pair I tried on the other day and just decided that they didn't fit, so I just threw them up. They sold instantly. Um, there's so many sizes and styles that have like super high sell through rates. For example, the 527s, in a size 36, 36, have like a 400% sell through rate. Uh, vintage 505s, small waist, long inseam, sell instantly. And you can price them like, once you know what sizes are super good, you can price them like $20 higher than everyone else and they'll sell instantly. It's sick. Um, I highly suggest you go to the thrift store and even if the Levi's are $20 at your thrift store, look up every single pair with the size so the style and the size and some of them are such high sell through rates and if you just go crazy on those high sell through rate ones and like price them way up people like think it's more special and they send you a reasonable offer just some 511 tactical pants 100 percent sell through rate on 3430 511 tacticals paid eight dollars on each of those for all the 511 tactical stuff, it's super size dependent. Did not look up the sell through rate on this Robert Graham shirt, but I got it because it has a like paisley pattern and paisley stuff just flies off the shelf. Even crappy brands. I picked up two Allen Flusser shirts the other day. Allen Flusser sucks. And I picked up two of the shirts. They've not sold yet, but the sell through rate was way better than I expected. Six bucks on that Robert Graham shirt. I think it's at least 20 bucks. Um, Faraday, it's a beloved brand by a lot of people. I don't like it that much. Even though the sell through rate is good, for some reason it just doesn't sell in my store. But I still pick it up because it should technically sell fast. Six bucks. Got two of those. All right, when I was in this thrift store, it was a bummer. This one dude, I walked in, go to the shirts, and I see this kind of a good looking guy, if I don't say so myself. Um, I always picture resellers as just kind of like grungy looking people, but he looked like he, he looked like a millionaire kind of guy. And he had a pair of cool shorts in his hand, and I was pissed. And then I see him go buy some like guitar hero guitar thing. There's like certain things that people buy that just make me cringe, like squishmallows. Ugh, guitar hero guitars. Ugh, 
It's just like, come on, ugh. Arby's. Um, <laughs> pair of uh, Faraday shorts, six bucks. I'm sure the South rate sucks on these, but over the summer it should be fine. Forgot to show you these. A pair of specialized cycling shorts, women's. Um, yeah, it's a great cycling brand. A lot of people have told me in the comments here and there on the internet that I've made them a lot of money because I told them to start looking up cycling stuff and bib shorts specifically. A lot of people have found Rafa, which I still haven't found. I found that, I found that in the men's section. I also found this in the men's section, Eileen Fisher. I'm not doing any women's sections right now. It's just whatever's on the new racks and what's in the men's section. This is a hundred percent linen. I think it's like a cardigan. What do you think, ladies? Is that a cardigan? What would you call this? What size is it? Size large. Found a pair of Lululemon, sh Lululemon shorts. There we go. Six bucks. I priced those at like 35 bucks and then take offers of up 25. I'm not picking up any Travis Matthew polo shirts, any RLX polo shirts, any FootJoy polo shirts, any Nike polo shirts. Any golf polo shirts right now because the sell through rate all sucks and I have to pay seven bucks for them, six or seven bucks in my thrifts. But Travis Matthew 2XL pullover long sleeve, if you search that, has a good sell through rate. And this was seven bucks. This should flip for like 25. But golf polos are the worst right now, dude. And that's like my main thing that I. Love to sell over the summer. And it just sucks because I'm going through the rack. It's like Travis Matthew, RLX, blah, 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 blah. Foot joy, foot joy, foot joy, uh, uh, Nike. And there's like so many of them and they're like, even like some solid sizes. But I looked up um, Travis Matthew XL polo today and it was not good. And all the oldest items in my store right now are all polo shirts. I did like an inventory. I did an inventory at the request of someone in my comments who said, how do you do inventory if you're just using custom SKUs? Well, it's really easy. You just go into your listings page and you type in, you get your box, you pull it out, you type in 1574 or whatever, and you type it in right here. If the item matches that, then you go to the next item in the box, you type in 1700, and it's really easy. It was really fast. I found 20 items that were not listed from my inventory. But that was all in the first rack, oldest rack of my inventory. And as I kept going, the newer racks had no unlisted items. So I don't know what that's about. Found this hockey jersey for $9. I think this is the South Carolina Stingrays. I just looked up Stingray hockey jersey. Um, and it was over 100% south of rates. And the prices were good. I think like 50 bucks on this one. Paid 10 or paid 9 this also was over 100 percent saw through it's a boy scouts a vintage boy scouts wool jacket it's a men's 38 so like a size small i believe that's what the logo looks like pretty cool should get like 50 60 bucks for this i was and there's like a lot that have sold it's it's a hot item this is kind of for myself i like shackets right now i'm into shackets so I got this like kind of canvas shirt jacket thing from Levi's. If I wanted to sell it, it would probably be a 15 to $20 item because it is kind of cool. It's like a heavier kind of canvas material with the railroad pinstripes, which does really well for like the workwear companies like Carhartt, Dickies, Ben Davis. And this one's also vintage uh, made in Hong Kong. But I'm gonna try it on, see if it uh, works. Then we got a vintage crew neck from Florida Institute of Technology, aviation, six bucks. These just generally do well, vintage crew neck sweatshirts during the winter. So I kind of took a shot on that one. Also took a shot on this one, which will probably do worse than that one because it's a less cool design, um, but it's actually a more popular style of crew neck. It's kind of a clone of the champion reverse weave. But Sac State's just not a popular school. Only like 17,000 people go there or something. But they're both vintage. 
made in USA. I found the other day I found a Champion Reverse Wave made in USA. Um, but it was a big spell out of Golden State Warriors. And there was zero listed and three sold. And all the comps were over $100. So I have that listed at like $150 right now. But this is like what Champion Reverse Waves, waves look like if you're looking for them in the thrift. They got these like panels here on the side. They're heavier. Uh, I think they're 100% cotton, I believe. Maybe not. But if you find the Made in USA ones, uh, price them up. Yeah. I found a Rain Spooner shirt. Six bucks. These are flying off the shelf, even though it is winter. Um, which is why I picked this one up, even though it has a little bit of like fading on the collar. So I usually would leave it on the shelf, but they've just been selling so fast. I figured I'll just give it a whirl. Uh, six bucks on that. Surprisingly high sell through rate on this because it's a women's large. Um, Nike United States soccer team jersey, women's large. Yeah, looks like I should get about 20 to $26. This is a Primal Cycling jersey. You kind of have to take a chance on these because it's just all about the graphic. They make like wacky pattern graphic cycling jerseys. Um, like sometimes I'll list them and they'll sell instantly. Like instantly and sometimes they won't. It just depends on the pattern. Whether cyclists are into that sort of thing. This one has like a weird astronaut, psychedelic, Sauron eye. Um, is that Sauron from the Lord of the Rings? It has like a little skull inside of there. I don't know. Don't get them if they have like First Union Bank, Wells Fargo, uh, the Afternoon Bike Club, like all kinds of like logos all over them. Just in general, cycling jerseys don't sell that well when there's like third party branding all over them. Just want like solid big graphic junk. Yeah, five eleven tags called two XL button up shirts have a high sell through rate. So I grabbed it for six bucks, probably like a twenty dollar item. And last but not least, um, some Boy Scouts cargo shorts for six bucks. I list them like over thirty dollars and take over twenty five for them, and they sell pretty quick. I mainly just get the adult size ones. I don't really grab any children's size Boy Scout stuff. I seem like a pretty short video. Uh, let's, because that's my last item for me. Let's see what the time is here. 17 minutes. I could probably push it to 20. I'll pull this stuff down from my uh, steam pile. I need to steam this stuff. Or maybe it's been hanging long enough that it's not really wrinkly anymore. I am still picking up the Peter Millars. They sell slightly better than all the other ones. I th The surprising one about the golf polos is that RLX doesn't do good. There was a period where RLX was like the best. Um, but Peter Millar's, if you price them at like 20 bucks, you can still sell them like relatively quickly. These are some cool vintage shorts that I found at the bins. They have like cows on them. I tried them on, they were just a little too short for me. I couldn't find anything on this brand. It's called Mad Cat or Mad Cows from Cape Town. But this is the sort of junk I buy at the bins, which is why I don't like to go to the bins, because this will probably be in my store forever. It's cool, and this probably will sell for like 15 bucks eventually. But all that stuff I showed you earlier is probably gonna sell within the next month. Here's a bolo for you. I found this brand several times. It's called Koala Tree. Um, I believe these are men's, but these are called the Trailhead Adventure Pant. Look it up. I don't remember what the sell through rate is on them. It used to be super good, but the prices are like $50. So I'll be getting like 50 bucks for those. A Lululemon button up shirt. I sell these all day long. I find them all the time. I think people just don't know they're Lululemon because there's like zero branding on it. It's always going to be right here on the side. Yeah. I didn't look this up when I found it. But this brand has never done wrong for me. Uh, Howler Bros. 
They're kind of like hiking pants. Probably should have looked them up, but I was just really excited and didn't look them up, but I'm sure it's good. A rain spinner shirt with hot rods. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, I would call it a hot rod shirt. I think this one's probably rayon. Spun rayon, size XL. This is all stuff I found yesterday. A hook. I already popped the tags. I don't remember what I paid. A Huck performance fishing shirt with the uh, new tags. It was 45 bucks originally. It's pretty good. Another Robert Graham with, uh, it's kind of like little, uh, little football dudes on there. Cool enough. Another Frank and Eileen from the men's section. I don't know why. These are always in the men's section. Like clearly this isn't a men's shirt because it only buttons up to here. But that's what's great about the Goodwill. Like the employees are... Uh, and then we have a Rourke Revival flannel shirt. Rourke, Rourke Revival is sick. It's like, it sounds similar to Catton for me. Similar to Catton, similar to... What's the Kelly Slater brand? Outer Known. It's maybe a little worse than that, but... If you price it around $20, it sells pretty fast. This one's a little worn. Probably get like 15 bucks for that. Oh, this is a banger. Wait, I'm missing a bag here. I'm missing a bag from the thrift store earlier. Where did... I hope it's in my car, dude. Because I found a um, an Ibex flannel shirt is it if i lost that ibex shirt i'm gonna be freaking pissed dude i found an ibex merino wool flannel shirt i never i didn't pull that out did i oh god maybe one of the bags i got at the thrift is gone maybe i left it in the cart one time i went to the thrift store and i bought 72 dollars worth of stuff i remember exactly the eco thrift and i pushed the cart out to my car and i just get in my car and i drive off with all the stuff left in the cart. And I never will forget $72. So I always push the cart back now. I'm gonna check in my car after I finish filming this and that freaking shirt better be in there. Damn it, Ibex is super good. Ugh. But I found this icebreaker merino wool t-shirt. Now I'm just bummed out. I better be in my car. <sighs> New attacks, Eddie Bauer. Travex pants. Travex is high sell through rate for their pants. They sell super fast. Those are new with tags, so it's even better. <sighs> Under Armour golf pants sell super fast. Just price them at like $25. Accept re reasonable offers. Just a pair of Athleta like jogger pants. Should be fine, like 20 bucks. And this one was actually one from my old inventory. Let's see. That wasn't listed for some reason. It's a new of tags. Uh, Anthropology corduroy skirt or skirt. It was seventy eight dollars originally. I got to iron it because it was folded up in the inventory so long that the buttons like made these dimples, which is irritating me. So, yeah. All right, well, I hope I find that shirt. And there might be like way more stuff with that shirt that I just can't remember buying. If I left it in the cart, I'm gonna be beyond pissed. Anyways, because I don't even know how much stuff I lost. There could be more, I don't, because I remember looking, when I pulled my bags out of the car, I looked again in the car just to double check to make sure that I wasn't leaving any bags. Okay, so. Uh, thank you for watching. My name is Big Yumbo.